Hey guys, welcome to the first round of the Legacy Challenge in uh, uh, April, actually. Um, for all of you who don't know, this is a huge uh, Legacy Tournament that came into being only recently and there's quite attractive prices for top 8. Uh, this one has about, I believe, 90 people, so we will be playing uh, 7 rounds, including top 8, if we make it. And here we go. I would like to play first, yes. Uh, hand is fine. Um, unfortunately, we don't know what we are up against. So... I'm a very firm believer in drawing whatever I need. So I will accelerate on the first turn just because we will get a ridiculous second turn if we happen to draw something that's not just lands of the glimpse and for the turn. So, yeah, if you want to play a more conservative game, you would just lead with Korean Ranger or a Heritage Druid and keep your glimpse, then do something on the second turn, probably involving Sunnet, and then try to glimpse on the third turn. But I really, really like acceleration, and I want to get it ahead as quickly as possible. So, yeah. I will just go for the dry double here as soon as our opponent basically arrives to the game. Okay, our opponent is back. It's quite likely he's playing Death in Texas, so at least from, from his uh, online record. So let's see. Doesn't really change too much about my plans. Like, okay, we're giving him a better sort of plowshares on the first turn, but we don't even know whether he has it. And even if he does, it's not the end of the world. Come on. Search your library for a green creature card. Why? Ah, oh, okay. Oh, lag. Good old lag. Oh, Wasteland? Okay. Basically, we both took a mulligan and... <laughs> now we're starting the game over, but I've got to let them play. That must feel a bit awkward for him. Now, now I'm actually um, waiting on the glimpse, because there's not a whole lot that he can do in the first turn that I would actually care about, and playing either of those doesn't really matter too much. I think I might actually wait another turn. Yeah, because by waiting another turn I'm getting much better value because now I can only like glimpse and then I'm guaranteed to only be able to cast these and then I have to pass. The only card I could draw that would change that is Virtual Ranger and that's not very likely. And even on, on the second turn I'm not expecting anything spectacular out of him. Especially the first game. Like the best thing he could do is probably port me here. And that would be perfectly fine. Actually, the best thing you could do is probably wasteland me and play Mother of Runes. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I could play Query Ranger to play around that. But I kind of don't want to, even though, like, now that he has the other wild wasteland, becomes much more attractive for him. Uh, let's say if I play Curian Ranger next turn, I play Glimpse, then I have like two, like the draw for the turn, draw for the Glimpse to draw something off that, and then, and then I untap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, potentially. Hmm. Nah, it's actually fine. If if he's got another Wasteland, so be it, I guess. Revoker could be annoying, like if he manages to, to buy another turn, he can stall with waste with part or wasteland and then while in a revoker to stop the heritage to it but i think things are looking f still looking fine like right now our, our plan is to ch to get a cradle into a crowd of behemoth as soon as possible uh, 
Oh yeah, opponent, no. Okay, here we go. Let's see what he's got. Or doesn't have. Okay, the second planes helps us, I guess. Mother of runes does as well. Okay, now this is quite good. Usually you wanna set it up in a way that Heritage is your last elf that comes into play, while already have having three other others into play in play, so when he tries to sort the plowshare or something, he can't hit the heritage to it and you're guaranteed to get the three mana of it. Uh I'm not sure if this is going to work in this game, but we can try. And he's pondering again. Is he like double queuing or something? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the Quarian Ranger, um, then probably the Death Rite, and then we'll have to see. I will probably then I'll probably follow it up with the Cradle into either Heritage or another Elf. And why would Simbi would also like be very much appreciated, even though mm, yeah, well, I guess it would be fine. I'm not very happy about running out Cradle without being able to cast Crato right away. But since he didn't wasteland on his turn, I mean he's definitely representing sorts of plowshares here. But he could have also had wasteland on his turn, and maybe him playing this way means that he doesn't have a second wasteland. Like I, I would probably ra rather wasteland the savannah than keeping up sorts of plowshares. Well, we find out. Yeah, that helps, I guess. Oh, okay, so something that could go wrong here is for him to sort supply just this right away before I get to get the second creature into play and then use Cradle because obviously I'm not gonna okay play Cradle and then play a second creature because then he knows that sort supply just is gonna mean minus one mana for me. Hmm. But nah, this is annoying. Now I kind of have to play the heritage if I want to continue, but he's representing sorts of plowshares, like really representing sorts of plowshares. So I think I'd rather Pendlehaven to keep my Gaia's Cradle safe, and then he sorts of plowshares, probably death right, and then I pass, and it's fine. And then he might revoke a heritage, but that's probably also fine. If I play Cradle here, Cradle Heritage. Sorry, I'm I'm really tired today. I, I got up pretty early to play in a, uh, in a Magic Card Market trial. Who <sighs> oh, cares? Okay, uh, I could also play. No, no, it's it's okay. If he has the sorts of plowshares, it doesn't matter too much. Like it's only slightly worse. Um, if he doesn't have the Sorts of Plowshares, it's only slightly worse to play the Pendlehaven over the Cryos Cradle, whereas if he does have the Sorts of Plowshares and has Porter Wasteland, it's much better to play the Pendlehaven instead of the, uh, the Gaius Cradle. Uh, I think he's just putting in another Mother of Runes, and that because he wants to have six. Uh, unfortunate. Well, not that unfortunate. I still have this untap. Let's see. Oh yeah, that, oh, that's f6 and that's a great draw. Uh, yeah, now we're gonna draw even more cards. This is gonna untap itself. Gonna play a second glimpse. I could even play a third glimpse. Um, how are we gonna draw? <laughs> Probably our entire deck. Huh? Huh? Um, yeah, but it's. Yeah, we still have enough to keep going for a while. At this point, we are not constricted by, by cards, but by mana. And the card I really wanna draw here is a second. Little Sentinel or my one of crop rotation so I can get another cradle into play. 
and we will eventually hit that. Oh, uh, oh both. <laughs> um, yeah, let's do it like this. So, actually, I don't have any other creatures except for the hasty Kratov that can attack. So, I mean, he's 99.99% sure to not have such plowshares. But if you like, also want to play around that, we probably shouldn't try to kill him with Behemoth, but with the um, Chairman of the Pack. And since we can do that, why wouldn't we? Okay. You have just to make sure not to die to, to drawing too many cards, which you can prevent by casting Green Sun Senate over and over and over again. Because it shuffles itself back into your library, it's just quite tedious and annoying to to actually do that. So I'd rather find um, Birch Law Rangers that I don't have yet, I guess. Yeah. So I can produce produce black mana. Mm, yeah, we'll eventually hit them. Still no, okay. Maybe they're in play and I'm so tired that I didn't notice. <laughs> ah, we can get them here, perfect. Oh, uh, yes, some black mana, please. And um, why about some yet? So we can replay and bounce our dude. Okay, and a second black, please. Where is Ledoot? Over here. Okay, that was easy. And then just. Could have tapped it for mana, like if I wanted to be more efficient. But it doesn't really matter here anymore. Uh, just like that, we killed our opponent on the fourth turn. It's a pretty good matchup, I have to say. Um, how do I want to sideboard? Uh, I would say, in Death and Texas, you always against Death and Texas, you always want the abruptly case. Uh, you definitely don't want Gadok. Um. And then something. Like, I always used to like to bring in the Pithing Needles, because in general they're much better than the Nyrod, because they also get to shut down Mother of Runes, so you can turn on your Abrupti case. Uh, in this version I'm not too sure anymore, since you're more grindy and equipment becomes more of an issue. So... Hmm. Uh. Let's see, what do I want to take out? Like, crop rotation, I kind of want to take out. Like, I always want to take it out against all the fair decks, but also against the unfair decks. It's just one of those cards that gets spotted out a lot. Like, it's solid, but not stellar. But it enables Caracas, which isn't, like, a big or a card at all in this matchup. Goose can go out, and then some. Um... I usually like to keep this guy even though he's like pretty slow. Maybe I should take him out, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm gonna take him out now. Yeah, he, he's also pretty bad against Revoker, I guess. Uh, and something else I usually usually do against Revoker is cutting down on like the activated abilities guys, but Death Chem is fine. You can actually take out like two of those because they very often have containment priests or cages, which are like super annoying. On the other hand, they will very often win you the game, so... Against Titan Texas, you, like, the problem is, there's quite a lot of hate, and most of the time they're only playing like 60% of what they could play against you, because you're not the only deck in the format, so it's kind of guesswork, and usually, even though it's technically the same cards in game 2 and game 3, the third game is usually much better for you, because then you know what you're up against. Hopefully. Um, yeah. I guess I'm gonna keep this guy in. Yeah, let's just go with this. I'm, I might wanna bring in the Nyrod. I'm, I'm still torn on it. Uh, 
Oh, this hand. <laughs> we can't even get the Dryad Arbor. But I guess it's fine. Let's just hope he doesn't have a f uh, fast start. Yeah, that helps. I'm pretty sure he has lots of plowshares here. At least that's what I would assume, but of course I could be very wrong. Just feels salts to plowshare. Especially since he didn't have six and ah, okay. Or maybe he just doesn't want to salt to plowshares this. Now I hope he plays, I don't know, Stoneforge and then has nothing or I, I don't like the cards I don't okay, perfect. Hmm, that's awkward. He had no he kept her seven card hand but had no first or second turn play. Huh. Is it, is it like a Cataclysm draw, but they usually don't bring it in. That's weird. Um. So what I really want to do is play Dryad Arbor and pass. Or attack. Actually, I don't want to attack because it looks like... Yeah, it very much looks like Containment Priest now that I think about it. So if I had Crop Rotation, I could really blow him out by just attacking. And then he's like, ho, 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 Containment Priest. And then we're like, Crop Rotation, Pedalhaven, GG. And then he's like, fuck. But yeah, um, if it is like I had no intentions of using this anyways, so hmm. I just hate the idea of running out on naked droid abba. So I should also play Quarian Ranger, but then it's a I'm already down one card, one creature for Heritage Shooter. I could also just play this and pass, and next turn go. Glimpse, Quarion, Cradle, Heritage, that's not awful. That's also... <laughs> it's so weird to just not do anything. Yeah, I, I guess I'm gonna go like this. I should have also played the Dried Arbor. Actually, I shouldn't have played the Dried Arbor right away. The problem about Containment Priest is if he plays it in response to Quirion Ranger for, yeah, there it is, for whatever reason, then I can't play Dried Arbor on my second main phase, or like at all, because it gets exiled. <laughs> which is really weird. Like, which would be really weird if he played this in response to this just for no reason. On the other hand, yeah, he was hoping to eat this, so he didn't do it. Okay, uh, now if he has Wasteland, it's really annoying, but I guess it's it's gonna be fine. Because bouncing the Dried Arbor would be even worse. Yeah. At least this shuts him down for another turn. Okay. Well, this is that. And, hmm. Like, I could draw two cards. I could go Glimpse, Land, Heritage, Tap, Lanova Elves, and then still have Gaia's Cradle. <laughs> but is that gonna be good enough? I'm pretty sure he would have played either Spawn Cannonist instead of Wasteland if he had it. So I guess he doesn't have it, so I'm gonna wait one more turn. Is there one white flash creature? Actually, isn't there like this this kind of cat that has flash that you can play if your opponent... Oh no, it's the other way around. It's green and you can play it when your opponent controls something white. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> it's not in the stack. Okay, please do something that doesn't matter. I would very much appreciate that. Please don't play port. Port would be actually annoying. Even though it wouldn't really get him ahead or pose any threat. Um, yeah, Thalia is... F oh, perfect. <laughs> That's exactly... The actually, it's not the card I want to see because now Glimpse is one more expensive. Uh, so I would Glimpse and do nothing. Oh, awful. So I could draw two cards and expose my cradle, or play my cradle and do nothing, and then, st yeah, if I don't top deck a land, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, it's it's probably the best I can do here, because I'm falling too far behind, especially if he does something about my cradle next turn, which I very much assume he's going to. Oh, one more mana, and, like, it's not that... We are into really big trouble. If he wastelands and sorts to plowshares heritage to it, that's annoying. But other than that, it's okay. -ish. I just want to find DK sooner or later. Or crop rotation would be really great to blow him out. He's got five cards, but he's like, oh, there it is. 
Oh, and we draw useless card. Now oh, this is so annoying. Otherwise, we could have like drawn so many cards. Mm -hmm. But I guess we can still draw decay. Pass. The only br uh, like on the bright side, he's mana screwed, and I really hope he doesn't have a land. Oh, okay, he's not attacking with the hate bears, which means he really doesn't have sorts of flourishes. And I don't care about Thalia at all. I would need it. To, I would need to block it with three creatures to kill it, which is totally not worth it. Second canonist, huh? Canonist plus containment priest is really hard to beat. Uh, I could play a 2-2, or I could draw a card. I think I want to draw a card. And uh, there's more 2-2s. Two 2-2! Two two -two. I wish all my elves had flash or something, I don't know. <laughs> Isn't there a ley line? Yeah, where you can basically play everything and anything with flash. And uh, 2 damage is fine. So much hate. And Avenger, okay. Maybe I do want to bring in Packmaster again. Oh, see, this hand would probably win on this very same turn if it wasn't for those. But yeah, that's just how it works sometimes. So he's guaranteed to deal. Oh man. Oh man. At least you get to gain a life. A point of life. <laughs> so now we're taking five, and if I do take five, I'm dead to Sarah Avenger next turn, so I should jump block. I mean, once again, I could triple block, but uh, like, and now we would be guaranteed for the triple block, block to work, but then we still lose, like, Probably these two guys, like these two guys. And then. Hmm. No, it's still rather a jump block because that buys more time overall. Glimpse. Huh. I wish. At this point, we're really. Like, we could hard cast Behemoth. Could we? One, two, three. Yeah, we could hard cast Behemoth, but it wouldn't be enough. Oh man, this would be so amazing. <laughs> uh, okay, pass. He could actually go all in on his turn and force us to block with every single creature. If I was him, I wouldn't hate that. I mean, obviously, if you have DK, well, even if you have DK, it wouldn't do too much to him. <laughs> all the hate bears. So when I said they usually play 60%, of course I meant they usually play 95%, apparently. Ah, it just happened that he drew the exact hate pairs that he needed. There's probably some other hate that people play that would have, wouldn't have been good here. So I guess that's okay. And since this is going to be our last turn anyways, we can also fetch because the one point of life isn't gonna matter. <laughs> this end would be amazing. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, next try. So, anything I want to change? Maybe this guy, because it's good again. Like, when your opponent is committing to a lot of hate, sometimes you just want to be the silly, stupid creature deck that doesn't care about the hate. Um. <laughs> I hate taking out glimpses. Like in this deck. In, in traditional natural order uh, elves, I would take out two glimpses right away. On the other hand, I also wouldn't want to rely on decay, uh, on, on natural order, because he has instant speed. Hate bears. Hmm. I think I'm just going to go with this and hope for the best. Sometimes that's just how you do it in Legacy. We're on the play, so 
Let's see. Why is this in here? Oh! Bob is in here. Michael Bonder, Mr. Bonder is in here. He's tied. DJ already won. He's probably playing a Drazi, I guess. Marcus is down again. Da, da, da. I wonder what he's doing. Like, did we really show him anything that he would care about? Probably not. Or maybe it's just really double Q because he took so much time early on. I don't know. So the hand I'm looking for is something that puts a lot of creatures to the board on turn two. And then just uses his mana for for the good in the world. Like, I don't know. <laughs> something that does something that doesn't even need to kill him, but like put me so far ahead that makes him it's really hard for him to catch up because the thing about like this matchup is they don't really have a reset button. Like they could have Cataclysm, but in general it's not very good in this matchup. Um so I'm not expecting it. And since they don't have a reset button, it's really hard for them to, to catch up with you. Like they have Chitte, which can help quite a lot if they put it on a flyer or on a creature with protection from gr uh, green thanks to Mother of Runes. But it's not like we have ways around Chitte. And even if, like, if you're decently ahead, um, you can even take like one, two, sometimes three Chitte hits and still win the game. Uh, this, is, this is pretty good, yeah. I'm gonna keep that. I think I'm gonna run out the Lana Wives first. And I'm gonna do it off a basic land. Because Lana Wives are guaranteed mana. Even if, like, he's not gonna put a land into his graveyard in his turn. And if I draw Kyrian Ranger, I can actually get two activations, squeeze two activations out of this. Whereas with this, I couldn't do that. So let's see. How come we are down to 12 minutes now? Wasn't he like on 50? Oh, yeah, we, we had the long glimpse turn. I see, I see. Okay, so here I'm gonna glimpse on the second turn, like, right away. Please don't have such a plowshare. So that's okay. <laughs> um, like, technically, I could name Wasteland, but like, not here, not now. That This is really not a Wasteland game right now. It could become one. But. Right here, right now, I just want to set up a strong glimpse, and since he doesn't have anything, and if he wants to interact with us, he once again won't have anything. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, and nothing else? Okay. I could also just play the Visionary, hmm. and then name Wasteland, but that's... Since he doesn't even have Wasteland or part, it's probably loose. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm... This is very like I usually don't play like this, but since he he's struggling very hard, I'm trying to get a better glimpse next turn, because like what we could do with the glimpse is get a tiny bit ahead, and then if he hit a couple of bad top decks, he will eventually catch back up. Whereas uh, here we just need him to to miss on something relevant for one more turn, and then we will probably get a pretty decent glimpse. Which will make it even harder for him to catch up. So I'm taking the slightly worse position in the short term to establish a stronger position long term. And uh, this is annoying. I guess I could have guessed that he has a lot of thoughts, a lot of removal since he kept a one lander. Please draw like a fetch land would be okay. Like obviously I want to draw a cheap creature, but fetch land would also do. Because Fetchland gets Stride Arbor and that's quite a lot of mana then. No, I actually I wanna have port now. Come on. Or you can draw Stride Arbor right away. <laughs> Mother of Runes. And now we don't have creatures. Blech. But actually, the land is great because now we have access to black. 
But if I wanna, actually I don't need to kill Mother of Runes right over here. Yeah. I'd rather use the, the Pithing Needle for something like a Vial or... <laughs> oh, another Mother... Now, now it actually becomes quite attractive to go for it. I think I might actually do it. On the other hand, if I do it, he's just gonna trade for this and this, and then my two cradles make much less mana. Whereas right now I could I could even send it for for Beermoth here. I've got three, six, nine. Yeah. So maybe I shouldn't do it. Okay. I could wait for one more turn to get a better glimpse, but I really wanna draw um I really wanna draw Green Sun Senate here. And not another cradle. Fuck this. This is awkward now. Mm. No, I, I just don't want to trade two of my guys for his mother of runes and then get in for two damage next turn, which wouldn't even do too much. Especially once he finds the second land. Then I guess I could still prop decay the creature, but then... I still, once again, only get him for two, for two more damage, so I put him to like 11, maybe 10 if I draw a creature. And then he's got virtual card advantage, kind of. Because I can't attack through another, say, Stoneforge mistake, mistake. Right here, right now, we have an insane amount of top decks, so I'd rather just play the waiting game. And by insane, I mean three Senate, one Beomoth. Uh, every while with Symbiot, of which we have three left, I believe. Yeah. Those would be pretty good. And it's also not, not like he's posing any threat. Like, the usually in, in stall, stall, uh, stalled situations, I'm scared of, like, Chitter from the top into play and Chitter equip attack. But he's very... Oh, come on, really? <laughs> Now I actually want him to draw a wasteland, but he would probably need it. Uh, he would probably use it to cast a creature, I guess. Ah, uh, da da. Well, oh, this is awkward now. Yes, this is. Cradle is literally the last card I want to draw here, and now I've drawn three in a row, kind of. Like, not in a row, but three out of four draws were cradles, or something like that. Does he have sorts of pleasures? No. Oh, finally. And he's gonna play Revoker and name Heritage to it. I guess. He's got seven cards in hand. Oh my god. I was hoping we would draw a business before he would draw his second land. Nah. I mean, whatever he plays, I'm probably not going to be very scared about that card, but I could be become scared about the next card he plays. So, let's see. Oh, this doesn't help too much. I guess at this point I can name Mother... Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have waited one more turn. Yep. Protection from green, and then just another mother gets protection, I guess. No? Okay. Mother of runes. Senor runes, your mother is protected now. I'm just casting this because it ha has a much easier time blocking like either of those. He's obviously not going to attack with this, but just for the small chance that I'm gonna draw one of my three chitters, uh, one of my three glimpses, I'd rather have this in play for now. Could be wrong though, but on the other hand, it also gives me more mana if he. Man oh, he found another land, okay. Ah. Ah. Usually in the game of mana flood versus mana screw, you probably heard this quite often, but uh, if the game goes long, mana screw usually wins out against mana flood. And this might be happening here, we don't know. Is he gonna attack? No. Attacking would be crazy, I guess. 
Oh, he has Containment Priest, huh? I, 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 I'm feeling Containment Priest once again. Maybe I should have attacked with the Nettle Sentinel first. What? He's playing something? Oh, there is Containment Priest, yeah. Well, it's okay. Oh, come on! Even more of those? Uh, 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 annoying. I guess it's okay to trade. No, this is actually... I really should have attacked first. Um, but the two damage is gonna be... good. Like he doesn't really have any good blocks here. The problem is now it can't block. <laughs> Which is why I'm a bit annoyed about my stupid play here. But on the other hand, it's quite unlikely he's gonna... He's gonna risk it. Because I could double block, or even triple block, and if I triple block, he... He, need, he needs two sorts of plowshares, of which he only has like two left in the deck. So, if he actually was to attack here, I, it would be really confusing. Good thing is, any Sunnet probably kills him, and we also have... Actually, no, <laughs> no Sunnet doesn't kill him, because we would need to abrupt decay this first, and then we already played a spell, so we couldn't cast it right away, so we would need to wait for one more turn. Let's see. So in situations like this, I'm I'm always like trying to create different scenarios in my head how how the game could play out. Like what could he have that would swing the the game into his favor? Like for me, there's quite a lot of stuff that I can draw. Like pretty much any business. But for him, like right now, he wants to draw Chitter because he has an evasive flyer. He doesn't know that we have DK. Um, so that would be annoying. Uh, other than that, ah, okay. This this card <laughs> is kind of funny because it works against Mother of Runes. Uh, had we not turned it off, because it allows you to block because it doesn't have a like if you play it as a morph, uh, it doesn't have a color. <laughs> but since I'd rather actually, I don't need to untap this. Hmm. This is at this point I might actually just wait. I'm not sure, because Nettle Sentinel can't attack because he's got a three three Avenger. And I'm not yet ready to kill the Avenger. Can I just like draw Beermoth? That would be the easiest thing. If I play the Butch Ranger, and uh, morphed. No, the Vigilance is also quite annoying because now I can't like go back and forth trade like getting in for two, for two, for two, for two, because yeah, he's got this guy. I could decay it, but the decay is like it's probably not gonna come down to a race anytime soon, so I'd rather hold on to the decay. Yeah, I could also just keep this in case. Not like now, I can probably keep this in case I draw a decay. Yeah, uh, uh, a glimpse. He's thinking. So, so it's a plowshare. One of these two. Maybe? Or just AFK playing your Cubecraft? Okay, that's fine. It's one less card I have to worry about. He could actually, ha since he doesn't have uh, Stoneforge, because he would have played that way earlier. Um, I could actually see him having Chitter in hand. And, nah, nah, it's, nah. I mean, it's something that could be there, but... And then he would be thinking about playing it right now, or hoping to top deck a land for the surprise factor. Because if he, if he Chit equips it right away, I can't Reclamation Sage it. If I had Sage, but I would have used Sage anyways, so there's no need to play around that. Uh, so I guess he doesn't have Chitter. Unless he plays it now. <laughs> In which case, I very much assume he has Chitter. <laughs> uh, so what, what is he thinking about? Flicker Wisp? There's nothing he can Flicker Wisp for value. I guess he could Flicker... Yeah, Flicker Wisp... Yeah, I guess if he wants to make a final attack, he could Flicker Wisp Pithing Needle and then give these two protection and attack for seven. Oh, come on, another one? Oh, literally all the hate. 
I mean, we are, we still have quite a lot of pretty good top decks, like Senate and like Natural Beer Moth even. So maybe I should just fetch to increase, like, the, it, the, it's so tiny, the difference is so tiny, and usually the life total matters, so I'm not gonna do it. And on top of that, if I ever need to like produce black and he wastelands one of my bayous, then I can still get another one. Uh, yeah. Or just draw it. I really wish we could draw something else now. It's been enough lands, so... We could even just like almost kill him with Shaman of the Pack and Violet's Mute. Probably take. Yeah, it wouldn't take too long. But then. In order for that to happen, we would even need to do, draw them first. So let's see. I'm still on the draw Behemoth plan right now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's never had uh, an elf, Elf's player untap with Gaia's Cradle nine times and not kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Mothers. Okay, that's interesting. Like, now I could abrupt decay the Containment Priest. Because, like, if I draw Glimpse, it doesn't really matter anymore, because in order for Glimpse to become active, I would ne need to get rid of those. Um, so I can decay. Like, I could decay Containment Priest, untap this. Uh, blocker Mother of Runes, and then maybe trade this for this, and then he's down to these, and this keeps hacking away, and these two will be, never be able to attack. The other thing I could do is decay the Avenger, and then Blocker Mother of Runes, and put this on the second Mother of Runes, and then he's only got like these three that also will like never be able to attack again. I wouldn't hate that, but this like this takes ages to kill us. Now it's gonna put us to 16, then we draw a card. Then it puts us to 13, then we draw a card. Then it puts us to 10, then we draw a card. Seven, four, so we would draw like, let's say four cards, maybe in five. Assuming he might also hit something at some point. And I would hate myself if I didn't kill the Containment Priest, I guess. But Containment Priest is the trickiest card to kill. Because the problem about it is, um, unlike these two, you can never be sure whether you actually killed it, because there might be a second card in his hand, a second copy in his hand that he would play out. But actually, he didn't play it out at my end of turn or something. Oh, well, he couldn't. He played this and this. Uh, okay. Fourth thoughts. Okay. At least we still killed the priest. I don't hate blocking here. What happens if I block both? Then I've got these two left, which is like not enough. Yeah, but those two mothers are gonna keep hacking away anyways. I'm gonna trade for one mother. Man, I, I wish you could play Cradle as a morph or something. Revoker, okay. Probably why I would say mute. On the other hand, once I, he has this and this, he doesn't even need this. I guess if I have... Re oh, okay. I think this is gonna kill this now. Um, Do I wanna play a second 2-2? Two -two? Yeah, I'm gonna play this guy morphed. Now I'm... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna kill this era Avenger now. It's also good to know that he's out of sorts of plowshares at this point. But he still has four cards in hand. What are those four cards, man? Hmm. Probably should trade here. I really feel I want to keep this for Chitter and just take another three damage. I think it's probably better. I mean, it's probably not wrong. Oh, please don't kill the Bayou. He might actually want to kill the Bayou. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! <laughs> oh my god! This is my worst nightmare. You must have drawn this this turn, right? <laughs> oh fuck! Okay. Now we're guaranteed to take seven damage a turn, which is exactly enough to kill us in two swings. Oh, 
Hey, I guess we can, we can jump block once, but... Oh, the dried Abba, okay. That's awkward. Oh, this doesn't do anything, at least it produces more mana. Man, we are really in trouble. Kind of chance. Like, I, I know I sided out one of my sonnets, but I've seen almost half my deck. Just give me a single sonnet. Or maybe he actually has a name, a priest. But what are we. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, we kind of could beat this, beat it, but no, we can't really beat it right now, because we don't have enough mana. Do I want to decay the, the Avenger now? If I do, I just take four, probably have to. What is he doing? Does he have Ninja of the Deep Hours? He's doing something during attacks. Dismembering my loot. Okay. So now he... Now I really gotta decay this, just to decrease his clock. And since he can't play any spells anymore, I can just have six. And here comes Structure Pump. No. <laughs> no, even Sunnet probably doesn't do... Oh, come on. Oh, another one of those? Okay. Heritage Druids. See, this would be so amazing if, if it wasn't for these two. <laughs> oh, okay. We still get to live for, like, two more turns. Unless he finds something, of course. Like, this card is already annoying because you, you have a hard, much harder time casting, like, casting this all the time, spamming this, basically. Uh, but with this in the mix, it doesn't even matter. Okay, so we're guaranteed to go to 6 this turn. And we want to have more than 5 life next turn. So it seems like this is the right block. And then we take 5. And then he goes all in next turn. Yeah, but we need to draw something now. Like, right now. And I'm not even sure what that something would be. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, I'm... I'm it's, uh, oh, it's so annoying that he meant... Yeah, well, I guess I didn't play perfectly at some point. It must have been something I could have done, considering for, like he, he was stuck on one planes for three or four turns. More like three, I believe. And he, I guess the reason he kept was because three point removal spells and all the hate in the world. <laughs> this is not enough hate yet for, for me to call it like a guy leaving the house saying I'm not going to lose to elves because if that was your intention you wouldn't be playing this deck in the first place. <laughs> so let's see. Actually, the best thing we could draw here would be Reclamation Sage, because then we Reclamation Sage this, Bounce, Reclamation Sage this. But also Senate would be pretty nice. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's one mana short uh, one point of damage. Uh one mana short. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. That's enough, right? Ain't it? That's sixteen. Oh wow! <laughs> Let's see. Do I, can I still get? I've got Savannah and Bayou, and there's none removed. Da, da, da. Two, four, six, eight. How, two, four, six, eight. Four. Oh my! <laughs> oh. Almost. <laughs> I thought we. I thought I had it for some reason. Uh. Anyways. Hmm. I guess I should then kill either Swan Cannonist and Chitter. And then next turn, this guy takes me down to one life, and then I gotta come up with, with something. And if he's gonna take me down to one life, he could also attack with this and this, and then I have to block. I can, like. Ah, oh, that's. And the thing is, I have to kill Chitter, and in order for, to kill Chitter, I also have to kill. Actually, I don't need to kill this guy, do I? 
Oh yeah, of course I do. I'm stupid. I, I gotta kill this guy first. <laughs> oh, and I can't. F oh, I can't fetch. Ah. Oh. Is there something? I wish they would, they would print an elf that gets to like nuke your opponent's board without targeting because that wouldn't work. There's nothing else I want to draw here, do I? Like, Shaman to pack is too slow. Uh, all the other options are too slow. Wreck Sage. First of all, gotta wreck this. Yes, I would like to use it. Um, <laughs> I could also attack and see what he does. Because if he blocks, I can still bounce the Rex Sage. Oh, I should do it right away, right? And then he would get rid of this, but then I still need to top deck and... Nah, I, I shouldn't lose creatures this time. Actually, I'm gonna lose creatures, because Reclamation Sage is gonna kill this, and then this attacks, and if he attacks with these two, then I have to block... I could also attack just with the Visionary and see what happens. No, but I can't do that. He might actually, like, put this on this, and then I have to crack a fetch lane to replay this, and then I'm dead to this, so I really shouldn't do it. I was hoping I could get in for free damage, but unfortunately I can't. Oh, I'm down to 50 seconds? What? What? Okay, okay, sorry guys. Gotta play much faster now. I wish I could have drawn that sunnet much earlier. Because now we're going for a super defensive sunnet. Ah, anyways. Let's see. I guess Ooze would have been pretty good, but... Didn't I side it out? I think I sided out Ooze. Ooze would have been quite good because there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve creatures. Like we would go to, up to seventeen quite quick. Like at least we were to be able to balance out the life loss of the Crusader. On the other hand, he would still have chitter. Yeah, like we definitely need this anyways, but if I hadn't sided out Ooze and needed to stabilize on the next turn. Ooze would probably be one of the best things I could draw here. Uh, I have to kill the Chitter because otherwise I'm dead. Because he gets to put like double strike, first strike damage on, and then gets two counters, and then for the regular damage he just pumps him one time, and that's enough. So let's see. You can't even gain life of Swords and Plowshares anymore because he's out of them. <laughs> If he wants, he can just all in, and we have to trade, and then probably keep Elvish Visionary around. Or, yeah, I guess we could do it in a different way, but... Hmm. If he just attacks with, with the Crusader, he's giving us the out of... No, he's not giving us an out, because we would go down to one life, and even if we draw Senate, we are once again one mana short. <laughs> Yeah, that seems like the right play. Uh, which makes it all the more annoying to deal with. Probably something like this and this and then bounce the visionary and then have this one die, but then I should probably make it do it like this. But I'm pretty sure there's nothing I can draw except for a glimpse. But even if I draw a glimpse, I can't use my fetch lands, which makes it really hard to accomplish anything. I would need like the perfect glimpse. Okay, that does, at least that doesn't matter too much anymore. Oh man, yeah, I needed you earlier. Why did you fail me? 
<laughs> uh, it's the black mana now. He didn't even find anything. Oh, I r oh yeah, I ran, ran, ran out of time. Okay, it didn't matter. I guess I could have drawn... I could have drawn... Uh, crop rotation. Let's say I played this. Then two mana, one mana. Uh, three mana, five mana. No. Yeah, okay. Couldn't win anyways. Man, why did I take so much time this time? I usually don't time out. Especially not in like this matchup. Anyways, tune in for the next round. And... Let's see whether we can convert uh, 0, no, 0, 1 into uh, 7, 1? No, 6, 1. You only need 6, 1. We can do that. Okay, see you next round, guys.